What is going on guys, DBG here, and this is my third video for the Operation Sports YouTube channel. So lads, we are going to be talking about one player in this video that may be the single most underrated player in NBA 2K20, my team. The reason why I'm going to be talking about this player is that nobody is talking about him. I haven't made a video specifically about this guy, I've talked to him a few times, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this dude is legit. One, he is legit, and one of, if not the best, cheap two guards in the game. So as there's Nick Batum that everyone knows about. Problem is that not everybody knows about Dennis Scott. Unfortunately, it appears he's being price fixed right now, so hopefully um, I can show him being his actual price, which is less than 10 KMT. Unfortunately, something is going up, something's going on with the auction house right now, because it was supposed to have been a market crash, but all it seems to have done is, as you guys can see, the cheapest of all these cards by 1,000 MT, or sorry, by 500 MT is one hour, 49 minutes. So some there must be some sort of external forces affecting the auction house because not only has within three hours of the market being at its lowest ever, it has picked back up and is it is now higher than it's ever been before. Cards are now going for more expensive than they had before. So it's kind of unfortunate, but there will 100% be stages where this Dennis Scott card is less than um, 10 KMT. And for 10 KMT, you are getting a pretty much perfect, perfect card. So he is a 6'8 guy that can play at the small forward or the two guard position. I would probably run him at the two. I think he is a really, really good card. So 6'8, which is okay height for small forward, but again, it's really good height for a two guard. He's also got 25 Hall of Fame badges, catch and shoot, corner specialist, difficult shots, tireless shooter, range extender, quick draw, pickpocket, pick dodger, hot star, clamps, Hot Zone Hunter, Intimidator, Pogo Stick, Consistent Finisher, Contact Finisher, uh, Quick First Step, Downhill, as well as 18 Gold Badges as well. Not only that, but he has key stats that are good. Obviously, there are, like, it's great to have great, uh, 90 plus in every stat, but key stats, like 3 Ball, 97. Driving Dunk of 80. Ball Handle, 86. Passing IQ, Passing accuracy doesn't really matter too much, but again, 86 or above Ball Handling is all you need. He's got an insane perimeter defense and steal, which means he's going to be locked down. Also, if he does happen to get switched on to a big man, he's got okay interior defense at 80 and okay block of 80. If they are both serviceable. They are both usable. Like If he does happen to get switched on to a big, he's not going to be eaten alive like a lot of other two guards, especially undersized two guards. Got 87 speed, 84 speed of ball, 87 acceleration, which, again, does not seem the greatest, but it's not terrible, as well as 94 lateral quickness. So he will play the job of being that 3 and D guy for your team. He's not going to be a guy that you're going to be running everything through. He, But he is going to be a guy who can guard pretty much anybody, including the Tracy McGrady's and Glenn Rice of the world, as well as most players. And as well as that, he is a guy that's going to space the floor and be one of the best shooters in the game. So now we're going to get onto his hot zones and release. Then we're going to play a few games of TTO and honestly, I think this guy's probably equally as good in TTO as Unlimited. TTO, he can be, you can actually use him as a primary score. Unlimited, I haven't had any success using him as a primary score, but I have had a lot of success using him as just kind of a glue guy for a team. So anyway, now let's get on to the hot sends and release. So Dennis Scott, in-game his player build feels a lot bigger than 6'8". His arm, his wingspan, it's not the shortest, it's not too long. And if you're wondering why I'm bringing that up, it's actually very important for defense and getting in lanes for steals. Dribble animations, I think, are the exact same as T-Max, so I'm not much of a dribbler, but they're not terrible. Through the legs is okay. His dunking is pretty okay from what I've seen. Like, again, I haven't done much except shoot three-pointers with him, which he does at an unbelievably high rate. But, like, that's a dunk animation that's very, very rarely blocked. Let's try some of these out. So, yeah, like, they're not the worst dunk animations. As long as you're not, like, bringing the ball too far over your head... It's not too bad. Because again, if you do bring the ball too far back behind your head, it's very, very likely you're going to be hit with chase down blocks. But the thing with this card, it's the release. He's got Gerald Wallace base, which is one of the better bases in the game. It is definitely a lot of, like a lot of people have it as their favorite base. But it is a really, really good one in my opinion. I think it's top six as far as I know in green release win or in green window, according to 2K Labs anyway. But Rudy Gay upper is really, really nice. So... This is basically Gerald Wallace release with a better upper. And while he's not the dunker of Gerald Wallace, he is one inch taller, equally as good a perimeter defender, equally as good a post defender, and also can play the two guard, which is definitely a more favorable position for a 6'8 player than a 6'7 player at small forward. So 
Honestly, you're just getting a significantly better, in my opinion, Gerald Wallace card. Considering the fact that I know he was 12 and a half KMT there, but nine times out of 10, when the market isn't being, I don't even know what's going on in the market right now, when the market isn't um, being weird, you're going to be getting this guy for less than 10 KMT. And if buzzer beater super packs come out, expect this guy to get into five, six KMT max. And for that price, you are getting a guy who, I can't believe I'm not greening these, who will be greening pretty much every time he's left open. We'll be able to lock people down. And also, it's just going to be an overall solid glue guy for your squad. And again, a 10 KMT, most people will have over 100 KMT. A 10 KMT, all you really need is a role player, and this guy is going to be perfect for that. So anyway, now it's just green with three. And that's a two. Now let's get on to the game of TTO. Okay, so got a decent enough behind the back right there. Got open fairly easily. I just blew the release. That's fine though. Like again, he uh, the card did everything well. I just missed time the release. He was able to get open, and that's the big thing with a card is that like if he's if you have the ability to get open with a card, then that means more than anything because obviously timing is timing. Sometimes you're gonna be timing well, other times you're not gonna be timing well. But if a card can consistently get open. On times when you on days when you are timing well, you're gonna be destroying people. Like, yeah, he's not quite the dribbler of like a Glenn Rice or a Dwayne Wade or something like that. Um, but he can't, he's more than serviceable. Like, again, just like how it's easy to get T Mac open with his dribble moves, it's almost as easy to get um Dennis Scott open with um well the exact same dribble moves. Okay, we got him. Where we're left wide open, and that is my fault completely right there. Cook out Giannis and hit the wide open Dennis Scott, who greens the moving. Let's go. That's all we need. And that is a Quint. So let's play another game here. Okay, let's just try to get some space, see if we can suck him into a screen. And we do. And that's a little bit of space. We just got unfortunate with that one there. Oh, delayed catch. That's off as well. Oh, that's just two bad animations right there. We're all good, though. We're all good. We can switch all these. I'm not worried about... Really, anyone on this team except Cam Reddish? That's us, we got him. Nope, Hakeem didn't jump when I pressed triangle. Okay, so we've been hit with three really weird animations to start this game. So hopefully, hopefully that's just a sign that we're going to get a few lucky animations. Go past there, and I'm not passing up that shot. See, they leave them open. They do, and that is... I was about to say it's a green every time, but you know what? I'll take the three points. Really wish I greened it, though. Oh, walk right past the halfway line. That's way too wide open. Come on. You know Dennis Scott can shoot from anywhere inside the half court in this game mode. That's good. Moving. Okay, it went in. Again, I'm struggling the green right now, but you know what? Not a big deal. Three points is three points. Make him make bad passes. And that was way too much space. He should have pulled that with Cam Reddish. Hey, lads. So here's just a mini off-ball tip. So say someone is off-balling you, you just, basically, you stand in the corner, and you just give them one of these. A screen, and you're going to be wide open. If they want to all completely off-ball and stand in your center, you literally just call for a screen in the corner, and you're going to be open every single time. The only way to guard that, if you ever see someone calling for a corner screen, I'm not, I don't think this is the case in Unlimited. It's not actually the case in Unlimited, or if it is, it's nowhere near as bad. My advice would be always on-ball. So if you ever see somebody chilling in the corner with a shooter, always on ball, because this is what happens if you don't on ball. Okay, that's fine, it didn't work that time. That's fine, but we got wide open by literally doing nothing. Like doing absolutely nothing. A couple of movements here and there, no dribble moves, there's no pressure on the ball, especially in TTO, because maybe it's because you can't change your defensive settings. But that, if someone wants to completely hard off ball you, you've got to... Um, you can always use that option. And also, if you um, are playing off-ball and someone is running that, you better switch to on-ball because if you ever see someone calling for a screen in the corner, they know it. They realistically know what they're doing and are doing the exact same thing as I'm trying to do. So look, he's now forced, it's now forced him to on-ball this. If he on-balls it, we can just get a, even a tiny bit of contact and we get the wide open. I mean, that's a shot that he can hit. Hey, he's on-balling. Just fine. Through the legs. Now he's back to off ball. It's fine though. Hesitate in the corner. They leave him wide open again, and that's green. There we go. You gotta on ball me. You gotta on ball anyone. If someone knows how to be, how to run to the corner, you have to play on ball in this game mode. 
Okay, so can we cook an off balling bonga? No. No, no, we can't beat we can't beat off balling bonga. We can't beat off balling bonga, unfortunately. And oh you are kidding me. Did that animation just trigger? Did that animation just trigger? Okay, he wants to hard off ball and I'll play not play any form of defense, even bait defense, and literally just chill. We're doing it again. We're doing it again. Set the screen. Eventually he's gonna step under, which he does, and we have a wide open. That's game. So anyway, that's the video. You've got a guy right here, Dennis Scott, tank AMZ, who can do literally everything. So lads, if you guys don't, especially if you guys don't run through your two guard, like a lot of people do really just run point guard and center. If you are that type of a player, trust me, there is no need to buy a T-Mac. There is no need to buy an expensive player if that's your style of play. Just get someone like a Dennis Scott, use him to just hit jumpers and occasionally dribble, and he's going to be fantastic. But anyway, that is the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Operation Sports.